Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ryan, and I'm here today on behalf of the marketing team with School Health. I'd like to thank you all for joining us today and participating in our webinar with Rakaya Gibson, who is the founder of the Damani Gibson Foundation. Through the foundation, Rakaya provides leadership training and support as a mental performance coach to adults and teens, as well as raising awareness of sudden cardiac arrest. As part of her work, she has provided life-saving sudden cardiac arrest training to thousands of athletes and coaches across the nation, which is such important work, and we appreciate deeply her dedication to this life-saving cause. Before I turn the time over to Rakaya, I would like to review a few quick things about today's webinar. First, we will not be taking audio questions, but you can submit your questions through the questions interface in GoToWebinar. You can submit your questions anytime during the presentation, and we will uh, address the questions after Rakaya finishes with her presentation. This webinar will be recorded, and a link to it will be posted on the schoolhealth.com website, and we will email a copy of the recording to everyone for future playback. Everyone who attends today's webinar will also be receiving a certificate of attendance for joining us today, and you should expect to receive that in three to four uh, business days. Um, if you are having technical difficulties with the audio or visual portion of today's webinar, please call GoToWebinar directly at 855-352-9003. And as a special uh, treat for those attending the webinar today, we are giving away a, uh, a PowerHeart uh, G5 AED that has been kindly uh, donated to us by, by our friends and partners at Zoll. Uh, we will be giving away that AED during the presentation to someone who is attending here with us live, uh, and we will give that away later in the presentation. So we look forward to being able to provide that to some lucky winner. And now I will go ahead and turn the time over to you, Rakaya. Thank you so much for having me, and thank you everybody for joining today. Um, this is a really heavy topic that I'm talking to you about. Um, it takes a lot out of me mentally, emotionally, and even physically. Um, I remember sitting in a training similar to this one three years ago and not knowing the heaviness that, that the, these skills, these life-saving skills that we are taught, the heaviness that it would place on my own heart and on my own family. I knew as a coach and as a teacher for years that sudden cardiac arrest was something that could happen. Um, but even more so than that, I knew the skills of CPR and how to use an AED and that that was life saving. But what I did not know about sudden cardiac arrest was how sudden, you know, it says sudden in the word, in the name, but how sudden and how quickly it happens without warning. I lost my 17 year old son two and a half years ago while giving chest compressions and breaths. And I remember the thought in my head being, I cannot believe that the first time that I have to perform CPR, it's on my own child. It's not something that I expected, not something that I was prepared for. You could be prepared to do it in the line of duty on someone else, but really understanding that this can hit home, your home, my home, without warning, without symptoms, without a kid having the opportunity to say that something was wrong, that they felt chest pains, that, that something didn't feel right with their bodies. Because what I'm learning through my research, many times these kids, it feels normal to them. What they're feeling feels normal to them. And one of the things that haunts me night after night is wondering, did my baby feel any symptoms? Was there something going on that he just didn't know to tell me? And so I thought out, I, I set myself out on a mission to, to find answers about sudden cardiac arrest, because as a coach for over 20 years, I felt a bit of responsibility for knowing more about this, but also being on this side of it, being someone who 
has been a coach for over 20 years, someone that's worked with youth, worked with this line of, um, of, of health care, but also to have it happen to my own child, I felt, found myself in a unique position to find answers that may not have been um, out there for me before it was too late. So as you see on the screen, this is my baby, Damani. He's been playing sports since he was five years old. We come from an athletic background. Like I said, I've been coaching for over 20 years. I ran track throughout high school. I was on a college scholarship. And after college, I um, started coaching. I was coach of the year. I was Brooks, one of Brooks' most inspiring coach finalists. I'm on the wall of fame in Cypher ISD, the, the um, school district that I worked for. And I would give back every award and every accolade that I've ever achieved in coaching, just to have one more moment with my baby. But in this 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 um, seeking to find answers, I found so many families just like mine, who had healthy kids, who passed away with no warning, in their sleep, in sports, after sports, and the thing that was so common in the thread is that all of them it happened with really little to no warning when damani passed i went to the the doctor the pediatrician that he always saw and i told her what happened to damani and she assured me that it would not be his heart because damani did not grab his chest when he passed he never complained about a chest pain and that's something that you know in the trainings that we have on sudden cardiac arrest, it says, you know, a child might feel a sudden sharp pain in their chest and collapse, or they may um, complain of lightheadedness and collapse, but it's always some symptom right before the collapse. But in many of these cases, I'm gonna show you a little bit of this video. You'll see healthy kids who had no warning and suddenly collapsed this can happen to you like this is for real it's a week gaining here and today we are at school squash village you know she went down this water slide and came out the bottom unresponsive like literally i walk over to the wall and i turn off the light switch that's the only way you can describe what happened to our kids. It's like a switch just went off. They were alive and vibrant one moment and then just gone the next. And I never imagined a world where that could happen. I just remember punching out of work and getting a FaceTime call from my daughter, my youngest, my 10 year old, um, yelling, call 911. Um, Dad found Nolan in the shower and his feet are purple. These videos can be found on our YouTube page and you just look under our name, but I want you to Pay, pay quick attention this to, to you. Like, the fact that this is for real. Sorry. One of the kids, if you noticed, it said that he was playing at recess. This young man was on a 504 plan and he was playing at recess. I know a lot of you guys are healthcare workers, nurses, athletic trainers, and I want you to look at these situations and, and put yourself in these scenarios. There's a kid at recess. He's on a 504 plan. He has a heart condition. He knows he has a heart condition, but he's a kid, and he sneaks in place, you know, a little flag football, tag football with his friends, passes out, and no one around knows what happened. No one around knows what to do. These are the different scenarios that we need to start thinking about so that we can stop these preventable deaths from happening. Sudden cardiac arrest training is more than just knowing how to perform CPR. I knew how to perform CPR. The children who were with my son when he immediate, when he first collapsed, they knew how to perform CPR. But the thing that they've told me is that they did not realize that CPR was necessary. They did not realize that a healthy, athletic, vibrant kid could just collapse and need that kind of aid. 
So what was their first thought? Get them home to mama. Get them home to mama. And when I go out and I talk to kids at schools, their first thought is always, let's get coach. Let's get this adult. But they don't think about acting immediately and, and, and providing that life-saving um, aid in the few minutes that it might take for someone to get to them with an AED or get that adult there. So what the Damani Gibson Foundation, what we try to do is we raise awareness. We don't just uh, make sure that everybody knows how to do CPR, but we make sure that you know that there, this is something that can happen suddenly without warning. We provide awareness videos similar to the one that I just showed you on our YouTube channel. You just look up our name, Rakaya Gibson, do it for Damani. And we um, encourage you guys to share these videos. They are available on our YouTube page. You can share them at parent meetings. You can share them at your athletic meetings. On the first day of school and almost every school, you have a first day procedure that different teachers will give with their students. Why not use these videos or use this time to talk to them about the drills that you can perform for sudden cardiac arrests? We do fire drills every, you know, every month in schools. We do intruder in the building drills. My son knew what to do if an intruder came in the building. In fact, two weeks before he passed away, he sent me a text message frantic because there was a drill going on. And when those drills happen, you do not know if it's real or if it's sim a simulation. And he told me, that there might be someone in the building with a gun and he was hiding under the desk and that they had the lights out and for me to check on the news and see if something was going on. He knew what to do. Imagine if we did sudden cardiac arrest drills, these children would know what to do because many of those children that you saw in the video, they were with friends when it happened. They're in the locker rooms when it happens. They're at the end of a basketball um, practice and someone looks like they're on the ground resting or, or just relaxing. And that person is actually in cardiac arrest. It does not look as dramatic as we would expect it to look. So it is important for us to, to raise awareness, not just with the youth, but also with the staff. Do your teachers in the English hallway, do they know where the AED is? Do they know what to do? Once they've pressed the call button for the nurse to come, do they know what to do in the critical minutes that they're waiting on the nurse to arrive to the room? And will the nurse know to grab, it, grab an AED and bring it to the room with them so that that is something that is already in place? These protocols, these drills, this is something that we have to start doing in our school system. It really does not make sense that we are not doing it still in 2021. COVID has shown us how much we can do with, with having protocols in place and having um, procedures in place to protect and save lives. We need to do the same thing for sudden cardiac arrest. There are a lot of myths out there about sudden cardiac arrest. There's one myth that um, I even, you know, was, uh, uh, I guess, naive about. And you think that it happens mainly during sports. But the fact of the matter is two thirds of all sudden cardiac arrests are not during athletic activity. They happen after um, the, the, the um, athletic event. They, there, there's a young man in that video, he was he, after his basketball game, he went in the stands and he was watching the next basketball game and he collapsed in the stands and nobody knew what to do. And that young man passed away from sudden cardiac arrest exactly one month before Damani. And I think about that story so often because I'm like, if we would have heard about that story, would I have known to look a little bit deeper into my son's health? Because another myth is that just because they've had a physical exam that you think that they're safe, that you think that they nothing would happen. But the physical exam is outdated technology. It does not screen the heart the way that it needs to be done to make sure that it's functioning properly, to make sure that an arrhythmia or a structural abnormality is not present. It's outdated technology like a rotary phone, but most of you guys have smartphones. Most of you guys are watching this presentation on laptop computers, iPads, or smartphones. You are not dialed in on a landline listening to me, not seeing the slides, not able to see my face when I put my face on the screen, not able to see the videos because technology is up to date. We have to use the technology that's up to date for heart screenings as well. That means EKG exams should be a part of the annual physical exam. In Italy and in Japan, they use the EKGs um, as a routine part of the physical exams and they've reduced sudden cardiac arrest deaths by 85%. 
The annual physical exam that we use it listens to the heartbeat with the stethoscope, misses 90% of the conditions that lead to sudden cardiac arrest. In the video that I showed you, there was a young lady or a mom who her daughter passed away three days after her physical exam. And in fact, this young lady went to the doctor with complaints about lightheadedness and dizzy spells. And the doctor listened to her heart and said that going to a cardiologist would be a waste of money and that there was nothing wrong with her heart. It, it sounded perfectly fine. That's using outdated technology. We want to make sure that we are educating families that if they have any of the symptoms that are on the list that you will see in a little bit of that, that could um, be a sign or an indication of sudden cardiac arrest, then it is important for them to go to the doctor, go to the cardiologist and get screened, whether they're an athlete or not. It does not just affect athletes. It does not just affect kids or people who look like they're sick. Those kids in that video did not look sick. London, the 10 year old who went down the water slide, you heard her speaking. That was 10 to 15 minutes before she went down the water slide and came down unresponsive. It is important that we know any person, any gender, any race, any physical condition, they can experience sudden cardiac arrest. In fact, 7,000 youth die every year from sudden cardiac arrest. That is the number that we have got to change. It is not acceptable that 7,000 youth die every year from sudden cardiac arrest. And, and we live in a country that people live in mansions. People have, you know, we do, do heart screenings. I mean, not heart screenings, we do eye exams. We do hearing exams every year at the schools. Why can we not do the exams that protect the organ that keeps our bodies alive? And not only do 7,000 youth die every year from sudden cardiac arrest, 350,000 people die every year from sudden cardiac arrest. It kills more people than cancer. But we don't talk about it. We have got to start raising awareness because this affects you in the schools. You have kids who are playing in a basketball game, a football game, a track meet. Now someone in the stands collapse. They collapse and they're in sudden cardiac arrest. What do we do at that point? Because it's not just about the youth, but it's about every individual who is at risk that comes into the, the facilities that we work in. Um, so here are some of the symptoms. Fainting. Fainting is one of the number one symptoms of sudden cardiac arrest. I've gone around and I've talked to schools and to athletes and I'll ask the question every time, has anybody here fainted before? And not understood, you know, not ever been told what that was from. Every single time, more than one kid raises their hands and they've never been told that that is a risk factor for sudden cardiac arrest. They've never been told that they need to get a full cardiac workup to make sure that they're okay and they're back out there running cross country, running track, playing football, all of these things. We have to make sure that people are aware of the signs and the symptoms because this talk is called without warning, but it's because the warning signs and symptoms are so vague and are, are so overlooked that we don't realize that those are the warning signs and symptoms screaming out to us to pay attention. Dizziness and lightheadedness. I mean, I was a coach. I am a coach. I coach at um, the University of Alabama now, but I was a high school coach. And I um, remember having kids who would have lightheadedness or dizzy spells during practice. And there was no protocol in place saying that they needed to be screened or, or checked out by an athletic trainer before returning back to practice the next day. Of course, I would keep them out of practice for the rest of that day, but the next day they could return. They did many times return to practice the next day. And after my son passed, I thought back and I just was like, oh my God, there's so many times that I put a child's life at risk and did not know it. And it was not my fault, but it's the fault of the systems that are in place to make sure that coaches, that educators, that trainers, that nurses, that you all know how to put these protocols in place and have these discussions. I went to an athletic director after my son passed and I asked him, I said, if a kid fainted or, or was dizzy at practice, what would you do? Uh, before letting them return to practice the next day or what protocol is in place, they could not answer that question. Those are the hard questions that we have to ask. There's protocols in place for concussions. And that started 
with the movie Concussion, with movements being um, pressed and pushed forward to where everybody knew that this was something that we could not continue to turn a blind eye to. We could not continue to ignore and we had to put protocols in place. That is the same thing that I implore everyone to do as it relates to sudden cardiac arrest. So not only dizziness, fainting, um, also chest pain, discomfort, erasing heartbeat. Those should not be overlooked. Unusual shortness of breath, unusual fatigue and tiredness. And let's stop there. I will say that is probably the sign. That is probably the sign that was there for my son. Unusual fatigue and tiredness. In the days leading up to his arrest, he was a little bit more tired as I look back and I think back. And I, 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 it was spring break, you know, we went on a family vacation. We were just hanging out together and I thought he was just being a kid. I, I thought he was just laying around, you know, hanging out, not wanting to do too much because he's here, you know, 17 year old with his parents, you know, just wanting to get back to his friends. Um, actually a few days before Damani passed, he also had a very low grade fever and we cannot figure out why that, why that was there. Um, and it was just 100, it was not over 100. It went away. Um, the next day he was back to himself. He wanted to go out to eat with his friends. He wanted to go and exercise. He wanted to do all the normal things. But when I talk to other families, just there's a few others who their child, when they think back, they were a little bit more fatigued, maybe from a workout because we thought maybe he was a little bit more fatigued from a workout that day, but that was four to five days before he actually collapsed. Um, another thing is um, I, I, after Damani passed, there was a, a, a principal that worked in the district and she reached out to me and she told me that her son had had um, a surgery for to correct the condition in his heart and that the nurse noticed that he just didn't look well one day at school. His skin was a little discolored and she called him in and she called the mom down and they took him in and miraculously they they found his condition. And I think back and I'm like, what if someone would have noticed something with Damani? What if we were that attentive to everyone's child, not just the principal's child? And not saying that it happened just because of the principal's child, but just, it was just a, 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 a miraculous find that that nurse did um, that, that she did find, and I just wish that, I wish that someone would have seen something, that I would have seen something in Damani, but I have to accept the fact that sometimes there's nothing that I could have seen, but just being prepared to respond um, and also doing the screenings in advance, those are the things that could save lives like Damani. So that's why I speak out. That's why I'm here talking to you today, because this is not something that is rare. It is the number one killer on school campuses. One in 25 year, schools every year will have a sudden cardiac arrest on campus. One in 25. So if you break it down, there's 132,000 schools in the US. That means that one in 25 of them, 5,000 sudden cardiac arrest incidents will happen on a school campus this year. 5,000. So for us to think we don't have to be prepared, that it won't happen to us, that it won't happen on our watch is, 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 is naivety. And we have to stay ready. So what is the plan in your school building? What is the plan? Who will retrieve the AED? What will happen? Are your teachers prepared? Even if they are not certified in CPR, we have staff developments all the time. Is there a way that we can have mannequins available at staff development and just give them a little brief overview of what to do? They don't have to go through the full CPR training, but can they understand how to give simple chest compressions while they're waiting? Can you make sure to do a scavenger hunt and make sure that the, the teachers know where an AED is in the hallway closest to them? And can we talk about what sudden cardiac arrest looks like? This picture right here is what a lot of us might expect it to look like, dramatic. If someone is walking down the, the, the basketball court and they suddenly face plant, and they collapse and fall over, most of us will know what to do. We'll jump into action. But what about if it does not look like that? 
What about if a kid is in a classroom and they're having a seizure and that person goes into seizure protocol, which means that we just make sure that they're not hurting themselves. They're not banging themselves up against something. Um, they're not choking. Um, but what if that seizure is not truly a seizure? What if that sudden cardiac arrest? Is there a protocol to where when I push the call button to let you know that the child appears to be in a seizure, that you bring an AED in your response to get to me? I had a kid have a seizure in my English class when I was teaching. And the nurse came with a wheelchair, not an AED. Luckily, it was just a seizure. But what if that had been a sudden cardiac arrest? What would we have done? We would have wasted vital minutes running back to the nurse's office or running to wherever it is, to the athletic hallway to get the AED to bring it back. Do the kids know where the closest AEDs are? Those are these are questions that we need to talk about. Also, sudden cardiac arrest can look like they're resting. Damani looked like he was taking a nap. No one knew. No one knew that it was a dramatic incident. But kids need to be aware that if someone is, you know, having a normal uh, day and then they look like they've suddenly fallen asleep, what is the first step of CPR? Check for responsiveness. So let's talk to kids about even if it looks like someone is resting, we need to start checking for responsiveness. And it's okay if we woke them up from a nap. I'd rather that we wake them up from a nap than miss the opportunity to save a life. Sometimes it's looked at as a concussion and people think that the person has hit their head and that's why they're not responsive. Um, and you'll see a story in a moment that kind of um, explains that scenario. But there's so many kids who are participating in sports. Again, I wanna reiterate, this does not just affect athletes, but when we look at the athletes that participate in sports in our country, how many injuries, but sudden cardiac arrest is the number one cause of death, but we don't talk about it. We have protocols for concussion. It kills more kids than concussions. It kills more kids than, than cancer than anything else out there. And we gotta make sure that we start talking about it. So again, two thirds of sudden cardiac arrest will not occur during sports. Every three days, an athlete will die from sudden cardiac arrest. And one third of those sudden cardiac arrest death, just like Damani's, will not be able to determine the cause of why the heart stopped. And that's something that makes it really hard to continue to raise awareness. A lot of these death certificates will say natural causes, but it's not natural for a 17 year old's heart to suddenly stop with no indication of what went wrong. Damani's heart was slightly enlarged, um, but we still do not know why it was enlarged. Um, there are some kids who have arrhythmias. Um, one of my, um, a kid that I know of, they have, gone and gotten a, um, a cardiac a stress test on the treadmill and after they don't have arrhythmias during activity but it's in the rest period after they stop doing the tests while the EKG is still connected to them that their heartbeat goes into an arrhythmia and so that is something that you know when I keep stressing that it does not just happen during the activity a lot of times it's happening after the activity I want you to watch this little video about a coach and about how sudden the sudden cardiac arrest was. And one of the themes you'll hear a lot throughout the videos on my website is that the kids laugh. The kids, and it's no fault of their own, but because they don't know that this is real, they always assume that it's a joke and that someone's playing. Done the warm up, um, and then the student Jonathan, our athlete, he fell to the ground. At first, we thought he was kind of playing around, and then it looked more like a seizure. Um, and then we figured out something wasn't right. Um, so it's interesting her saying that, that a lot of people do think it's just a seizure, which we're taught to kind of step away and leave them alone. Um, but it, and then we figured out it wasn't a seizure. We proceeded, we started CPR, we called 911. So the doctor had said that this was something that he had been walking around with, that it could have happened anywhere. Um, it's just was something wrong with his heart that it had gone undetected. Or when I'm in trainings, um, because this happened to me, it was my very first year being a head coach. Um, and people just don't know that this could happen to anyone. I'm always watching and I don't know if they they know. I'm just, it's so serious to me. And I know you're right. It's not something that we really talk about that could happen to any athlete when we're out there. 
Um, so it would be neat if we could add that to our coaches' trainings, but actually addressing, like actually talking about sudden cardiac arrest. We right, we talk about how to use an AED, but we don't talk about why we would need to be using the AED. Right. It's like you were talking about before. The student hadn't complained. He had was completely healthy. There's nothing that we'd seen to be worried about him. The parents hadn't noticed anything. So this is my question to you. Um, in January, I spoke at the clinic and um, I asked, like, if you knew how common it was. So even after it happened to you, the conversations right. haven't happened enough to where you even knew that this wasn't a rare instance. Right. You're so right. Yes. No, I felt completely alone that this happened to me. <sighs> even you saying that that many happened that month. I didn't know that. So that that young man collapsed during the warm up. So many times we hear that it's from overexertion or that someone has done something wrong. A coach has done something wrong. The kids were dehydrated and 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 it does not we 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 hear those stories. We hear that it happens um and in the news they'll say dehydration or overexertion but they never come back and tell you the results of the autopsy or what happened. It's important that we up, have these conversations. Um, this it's important that we have these conversations with follow up to make sure that we stop making it seem like there's a coach at fault. The coach is not at fault. The athletic trainer is not at fault. The system is at fault. We have to improve the system in order to save the lives of these youth. Here's a PE teacher. I want you to think about this. When you have um, PE teachers, you have substitutes in the building. What if a substitute does not know what to do? Or even um, still, what if a substitute is not assigned and now you have a teacher who's supposed to be with 30 students who's now with about 60 students? How many kids did you have to manage that day by yourself, Coach Gordon? I probably had 60 to 100 kids <clears throat> in the gym by myself that day. Because on average, we have 45 kids per teacher. So it's easily 85 kids, approximately 85 kids. And so um, all of the symptoms that Jennifer talked about and that um, that a couple ladies have spoke of, um, this student displayed those. And um, I'm looking, and it was a day where we weren't doing anything major because there's only one person and you have to keep all kids in an area. So they were shooting baskets. And so all of a sudden, um, I see him go down and kids started laughing, thinking he was joking. And um, I didn't see exactly when he went down. And someone said he got hit with a basketball in the head. That's not what happened after reviewing the footage. Um, but I had to act real quickly, send the kid to the nurse, um, call for, actually call for administration send another kid to go get another coach who knew where the AED was and perform CPR while trying to guide the ambulance in the direction where we needed to get him in order to help that kid. One of the scariest moments of my life. I'm still, um, but I made sure I was with that kid the whole time because I knew that his parents sent him to school that day. And all I was worried about was that kid making it back home to his parents. How many kids? It, it, it baffles me that we still don't even require CPR for all coaches across the nation. And even not even just coaches, but teachers, bus drivers. You think about all the people who are alone with students. And if 7,000 youth are dying every year from sudden cardiac arrest, you would think that we would make this a part of the trainings that we do in schools. I don't know what we can do to make CPR something that all teachers have to know, not necessarily be CP, uh, CPR certified, but at least be familiar, at least be familiar with hands only CPR and understanding that, you know, they're not liable if they don't save the life, but all they need to do is make that attempt. The problem is so many people think that this is so rare and that it's not going to happen to them and even when we have these conversations with parents at the parents meetings about sudden cardiac arrest and giving them information sheets we give them information that gives them um, this false sense of security this is the sudden cardiac arrest awareness form that's handed out in texas 
and I've lobbied to try to get this, this changed. And you would think that it would not be that difficult of a process, but um, we're still working on it. But if you look here um, at the highlighted portion, it says that, you know, sudden cardiac arrest is um, something that happens with abnorm abnormalities, but that um, an echocardiogram is readily available to all athletes, but it's not mandatory and generally not recommended by either the American Heart Association or the American College of Cardiology. And that by getting these tests, it leads to false positives which leads to unnecessary stress for the student and parent, as well as unnecessary restriction from athletic participation. Let me tell you, I wish with every fiber of my being that my child was held out from athletic participation rather than being gone. I wish that I could have spent a few hundred bucks to get him screened rather than spend thousands of dollars for his funeral. These are a few pictures from some of the, the um, outreach that we've done, going out and talking to different teams, making sure that the athletes know how to perform CPR without the coach's intervention in case the coach is the one that has collapsed or in case you're out on a long run and the coach is not right there readily available, in case it happens in the locker room and the coach is not right there and someone needs to go and get the coach. Where is the closest AED to your outdoor practice facility? Where is the closest AED to your locker room? All of these questions are things that need to be discussed with athletes, with coaches, with teachers, with administrators, with parents. We cannot talk about it enough. We've even gone out to cross country meets, track meets. There was a track meet that they started in honor of Damani at his high school. Um, and it'll be an annual event where every year it is a sudden cardiac arrest awareness event. We also have the race to end sudden cardiac arrest, which is going on right now during the month of October. I encourage everybody to register for the race to end sudden cardiac arrest. It is free. This is something that we can do, just like breast cancer awareness is something that is talked about and so many people participate in. There's school-wide awareness days for 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 pink out and for breast cancer awareness. It does not mean that we have to stop doing that, but why can we not add in awareness days, awareness events, awareness games to where everybody red, wears red and they read out for sudden cardiac arrest during sudden cardiac arrest awareness month, October, or during February, which is heart awareness month. So can you that's your call to action. Can you come up with a, 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 a red out event or something to raise awareness on your campus? Can you encourage everyone on your campus to register for the race to end cardiac arrest? It is a free event and all we wanna do is stand together. Our goal is to get 7,000 people to walk in honor of the 7,000 youth who die every year from sudden cardiac arrest. We talked about knowing how to respond, making sure that the teachers and the students know what to do in the event, and making sure that we stop generalizing sudden cardiac arrest deaths with dehydration, with overheating, with overexertion, with someone doing something wrong. Maybe there's just something wrong with that kid's heart, and it's a ticking time bomb that we cannot see, something going on on the inside that we cannot see, but we have to be ready and prepared to respond and not make kids think, not make families think that it can't happen to them because Johnny, it just happened because he was dehydrated or he was doing something wrong. You know, something that really hurt me, when I was in high school, there was a kid in my high school who passed away suddenly and no one ever really said what happened. He passed away playing basketball just on his own at the rec center and everybody had rumors and, you know, things that they said might have happened. No one ever really explains it. And after Damani passed, I reached out to someone who knew him. And they said it was sudden cardiac arrest. 
many years before my son passed, if we would have had these conversations, then maybe I would have known more about it. Maybe I would have been able to take more action. And as a coach, I feel so guilty. I feel so guilty that I should have known more. But I didn't. I didn't know more. Because the protocols were not in place. The conversations are not in place. We do not talk about it. So as a coach, I knew what to do if a kid had a concussion. I knew the five-day protocol before they can return to practice. I knew they had to be cleared by a doctor. I knew they had to do no contact activity with no pain, no dizziness. And if they do that, fine, then they can progress to a little bit more 50% um, activity the next day. And at any point, if they start having dizziness or headaches, then they revert to day one. Why don't I know a, a, a protocol for like that for sudden cardiac arrest? There's a lightning protocol. If there's lightning, we have to wait a certain amount of minutes before we can go back outside and participate or do anything. But there's no sudden cardiac arrest protocol. We have to know when to remove the athlete from play, when to refer them to a medical practitioner, when to let them return to, to sports and um, have the doctors okay to do that. Each school can develop a protocol that, that works for them. Any protocol is better than none. So let's start having these hard, difficult conversations. And do we have enough AEDs that are operable on our campuses? How many do you have? How many students do you have? How many minutes does it take to get from one end of the building to the next? How many minutes does it take to get from where the AED is to the, to the, um, the track, to where the shot putters are? because it's not just to the edge of the track, but to where any athlete is, to the softball field. Are we having these conversations? Are we doing these scavenger hunts? So I challenge you guys to make sure to have these conversations, to, to start doing emergency drills. Don't wait on someone else to say that it's mandatory. You have the power to do a drill with your students on your campus, in your um, procedure talks you know, with your fire drills, with your intruder in the building drills, work in at least one drill to make sure that everybody knows what to do in the event of a sudden cardiac arrest. Two of the two, two children in that video passed away 15 years apart, identical circumstances, playing in an AAU basketball game. And one of the things that I've learned through my research is that AAU basketball games, they don't have to have AEDs available. And even when you have people who participate at your school campuses, AA, AAU practices, they don't always have access to the AEDs that are on campus and locked up in a way. And kids who are in AAU sports are about 58% more likely to pass away than a kid that that passes away. I mean, that has a sudden cardiac arrest at a regular school event. So these are things that, you know, we have to continue to talk about and we have to do our part to change. Please follow the Damani Gibson Foundation on social media, Instagram, Facebook. Our, um, our, our um, handle is do it for Damani. Our website is doitfordamani.com. Our YouTube channel is my name, Rakaya Gibson, and you will find so many videos about sudden cardiac arrest that you can share freely. The only video that is not available to share publicly is the last one that I just showed, and that will be coming out soon. Um, look out for the documentary without warning and help us spread awareness, help us save lives. If you could please register for the walk to the race to end sudden cardiac arrest. The more people that we have stand together, the more awareness that we will raise and the more lives that we have the opportunity to save. Um, I wanna go ahead at this time and open up the floor for questions. Um, we have a, just a few minutes left. And then also you can reach out to me on social media, I will respond. And you can also email me at admin at doitfordamani.com. 
thank you so much. Um, and whoever the uh, moderator is, if there are any questions, you can let me know. Thank you, Rakaya. Uh, this is Ryan with the school health team. Um, we do have some questions that have come in uh, before we move to the questions. I do just want to cover a, a couple of quick things. First of all, um, we had mentioned previously that we will be sending a copy of this recording out uh, to all of you to be able to view later. And as Rakaya said, uh, the documentary at the end is, is not yet for public viewing. Uh, so you have seen that as a, as a private viewing here. We will be editing that portion out of the video that is sent out, um, but the rest of the presentation will be included. So just a note for the audience, um, you know, you, you've seen it here. Uh, you will not be seeing it in the follow-up materials. However, we have committed to, to Rakaya that when uh, this is finalized and when it is available for public viewing, uh, we will be helping her to distribute that out. So keep an eye on your school health emails because we will be sending that out uh, once it is finalized and once it is available for public viewing. Um, secondly, we had uh, talked about, um, for those attending live, uh, we will be giving away, uh, thanks to our, our good friends and our partners at Zoll Medical, we'll be giving away a PowerHeart G5 AED. Uh, we have taken a drawing uh, during the presentation and our winner is Callie uh, from Hardeman County Board of Education in Tennessee. So Callie, congratulations. Um, you will be uh, receiving the, the PowerHeart G5 AED. Uh, it will be uh, sent to you to be able to be donated to the school, to the charity, or to the nonprofit organization of your choice. So congratulations, Callie. Um, and then lastly, one thing I wanted to cover is Rakaya had mentioned, you know, with a, with a um, very good reason, of course, um, for, for joining the race to end sudden cardiac arrest. In the follow-up materials that you receive after this webinar, there is a link uh, to the race to end sudden cardiac arrest. So if you're looking for how you might participate in that, just wait for the follow-up materials that come. Uh, they'll, they'll likely come out this afternoon. Uh, it'll be an email that comes from School Health, and there will be a link to join there, as well as several other resources that we're sending out uh, for you. So, all right. Uh, having taken care of those things, let's move on to a couple of questions. It looks like we've just got about five minutes left. Um, Rakaya, you had mentioned um, you know, that we don't have drills for sudden cardiac arrest. We have drills for uh, intruders in the building. We have drills for fire drills. Have you been able to work with schools and execute uh, drills or, or put together drills that schools can do? And if so, what do those look like? Yes, um, <clears throat> I have actually um, done those drills. I specifically, with my background in coaching, I focused on working with athletic teams, but there are organizations out there who have drills. There's an organization called Project Adam, and they do drills with schools and actually certify you as a heart safe school um, once you've they've taught you how to do the drills. Also, there is a template that I can send out with the follow-up materials, it's very simple to do a drill. All I, all you really need to do is make sure that you have people designated, just like you would have for the intruder in the building drill. You have administrators who are designated as the point person for certain responsibilities. You wanna make sure that you have that in place for um, sudden cardiac arrest. And you also wanna make sure that teachers know where the AEDs are close to their classrooms and that there's almost like a buddy system. So like if uh, my classroom, I'm in 1704, has an emergency incident, I press the call button, but also a student gets the teacher from next door to assist. So different things like that. And those protocol, the protocol that I can send out with the follow-up materials will go into that as well. But in addition to that, it's important that we have those conversations for our families too because when Damani passed, I didn't think about the fact that it took 15 minutes for the ambulance to get to us. That's a long time to give CPR. I was exhausted. Someone, a neighbor helped me. But afterwards, I thought about the fact that there's a rec center less than two minutes from where we were. 
I could have sent someone to that rec center to get the AED off the wall. So having conversations about where they are in our entire community, those things are important as well. Thank you, Rakaya. And, and I know that we had talked about uh, in a previous call, we had talked about the specific circumstances around uh, Damani's sudden cardiac arrest. Are you comfortable talking about that? Yes. There's not very much specifics. Damani was, um, he went to practice that day. And um, like in the video, it said he, when he, he came home from practice or he called me, you know, we talked and he came home from practice and then he went to get something to eat. And he was in the drive through Whataburger when he took a deep breath. and then close his eyes. And what I've learned later is that's agonal breathing. That wasn't normal breathing. He wasn't breathing anymore at that moment. And so, you know, the, the, the friends that were with him didn't know that he was in distress or that something was wrong. And then they drove home and when he got home and then it was time to get out the car and he didn't wake up. They came to get me out the house because I had gotten home at that point. And I came out and I picked my baby up. And I, I started giving him CPR compressions as much as I could, but I didn't realize that he had already been out for several minutes. And um, it took a whole nother 15 minutes for the ambulance to arrive. And even when we went to the emergency room, I begged and pleaded the doctor to shock his heart because when they attached the AED to it, it said no shock advice. So Damani never, he never received the shock. And um, it's just my mission to make sure that no other mother has to experience this pain. No other mother has to live with these thoughts of what if. Thank you uh, for sharing that, Rakaya. I, I think it's so important in relation, you know, as we talk about drills and as we talk about educating students, it's it's so important that the students, if they're in situations like this, if they're in situations where they're not in a school, where there's not others around, that, you know, they recognize that, you know, perhaps he isn't just taking a nap, perhaps there's something else going on. and through this education, through getting this message around, it, it can help um, other people to be just aware that, you know, th this might be a bigger problem than we realize um, and, and be able to take actions differently uh, because of that. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Um, it looks like we are about uh, time. Unfortunately, I, I do see that we have just a, a significant number of questions that have come in that we have not had time to get to, unfortunately. Um, please rest assured that uh, if you have submitted a question, we will reach out to you with an answer, uh, even, even if we haven't had time to, to address it uh, live during this presentation. Um, just a, a few final things here. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank our, our partners at Zoll uh, for bringing this presentation to us today. I'd like to thank Rakaya uh, for spending the time with us and, and sharing her story and, and helping to spread awareness about sudden cardiac arrest so that we can help to make sure that these kinds of things don't continue to happen. Um, uh, for the audience that's, uh, that's on, uh, as you're exiting the webinar, uh, there will be a survey that you'll see. Um, I would ask that you please just take a moment to fill out the few survey questions so that we can understand you know, what what was helpful, what you might like to have seen differently during this presentation, and uh, that will help us to improve these uh, presentations in the future. And uh, that will end today's broadcast for us. Uh, thank you all for joining, and have a, have a great Thursday. <laughs>